Meanwhile, as investigators look at everything that could have contributed to the deadly crash, experts are now weighing in on the tragedy. Here at home, one educator says as answers come in, they'll use that information to keep training in the classroom. See, New Yorker went to Kent State's air traffic control simulator, where faculty and staff are still processing the news. I see you. Yes, good morning. Good evening, Russ and Lena. Dr. Marie McFarland is an associate dean for the College of Aeronautics and Engineering at Kent State and a retired lieutenant colonel with the U.S. Marine Corps. Now, she tells me she and the students are watching closely to see how they can support. Dr. Maureen McFarland says at the College of Aeronautics and Engineering at Kent State University, they're all watching. Anytime you see something like that, your heart breaks and you worry. And waiting for answers. No one knows yet what caused the deadly midair collision near Washington, D.C. between the passenger jet and the Army helicopter that killed 67 people Wednesday evening. And Dr. McFarland says it will take some time. She tells me they'll eventually take the information and use it in the classroom here at Kent's air traffic control simulator where they use real world experiences to learn. The last accident that we had was the Colgan air crash and that resulted in what we now know is the, um, you know, pilots have to have 1500 hours of flight time before they can be hired as a first officer. Um, and, you know, the FAA came out with its regulations that they can offer restricted ATP is what we call it. And so that has filtered down to how we train and educate. Using her unique background to inspire. I am a retired uh, Marine. I, I did uh, fly as a navigator in the Marine Corps. So it, it, it brings an understanding um, of the different pathways for our students. And one of her personal goals is to make sure the next generation does the work and is prepared for the unexpected. When things do, you know, go wrong, it just helps us provide a, a perspective to them that um, training is always paramount. Um, that might be very much why, you know, let's not speculate, let's not let's stay calm, let's, you know, what I say, execute our mission. And our mission is training and education right now. NBC News reports the FAA is short about 3,000 controllers to fill air traffic control stations and towers across the country. Now, Dr. McFarland says they'll continue training those students who could hopefully one day fill some of those holes and gaps with their expertise. Russ? Okay. See you, New Yorker, here in the studio. Thank you.